hello everybody welcome to the um, channel welcome if you're new I'm Stacy and tonight we are going to do a time well you guys are gonna see a time-lapse of this painting uh, the tutorial will be up on patreon if you want the full-length paint with me um, experience yeah that's what it would be um, on patreon you will get the um, PDF of the line art. It will be probably downsized to uh, 8 by 10 um, depending on on the scan. Um, now the the tracing of the actual sketch as you can see is a little different. It's more simple. I just got the, the main lines in. It is up to you guys if you come over and you want to do this to decide how how you want your raven to be. We're doing a raven scene tonight. This is not the raven pumpkin painting I wanted to do, but it is the one we are going to do. <coughs> Excuse me. The piece that I have in my head, I lost my other eraser already, is, um, I lost my eraser, my tape, the little thingy on my table's falling off. Um, I'm not painting the painting I wanted to paint. Life is hard. <laughs> All right. Hi guys, welcome to the voiceover portion of the video. I am going to be uh, chit-chatting through the process here. I drew this all in with my graphite pencil and then I have my galaxy set out of the Schmincke uh, super granulating colors. And I'm grabbing some indigo and uh, dropping that in the background. This is just straight indigo right now. And then I'm grabbing some of the black and the, the pink or the rose color from the granulating set and a little bit of the uh, sap green to kind of make it look like an evening um, background, kind of distant. That bokeh kind of effect is what I was thinking about when I was doing that. And now I'm using Chinese orange to put in a base color for the pumpkins. I don't want them to be like, you know, your traditional super vibrant, bright orange pumpkins because it is a nighttime scene and I had to keep that in mind while I was painting. Um, yeah, going over the bird with some of the black in the galaxy set just to get in a, uh, a little bit of darkness, a little bit of shadow area in the feathers. And I really wanted the granulation effect of that paint, thinking it would give the bird a little bit of character and kind of make him pop a little bit when I do consecutive layers over the top. A little bit of uh, kind of darkening that background a little bit on the bottom to make it look more, I don't like that there's a possible pumpkin patch in the background, textures and whatnot. Uh, wiped up the, the wetness around the piece so I didn't accidentally get water on in an area where I didn't want it to be. I'm just dropping in a little tone on the, st the stalks or stems of the pumpkins. And I wait for this whole thing to dry pretty thoroughly before I um, go in and do any more watercolor. I'm using the Grumba Grumbacher watercolor paper, which I really don't care for. Um, this is not my favorite pad of watercolor paper that I've ever had. I am going to be buying more watercolor paper uh, and using this for other other mediums, uh, pastels and, and uh, colored pencil and whatnot. Right now I'm mixing indigo and uh, neutral tint and dioxazine purple to give the bird a kind of blue purple tint. I didn't want to just throw in black because these birds are not just black. Um, and I thought it would look more interesting if he was, uh, what do they call it, multifaceted. If he had multifacets to his beautiful coloring. And I'm using a kind of a flicking, swishing motion to get that feather texture in. A little bit of dry brush work here and there to, once again, make it look feathery. I'm letting some of the texture of the paper do the work for me. Um, 
the paintbrush I'm using is my Princeton Neptune round number eight and it is good for kind of staying bent over a little bit and allowing me to use it dry and, and get in those textures those little scrubbed textures of the feathers and now I'm gonna oh now I'm gonna work on the pumpkins I have um I think I grabbed yeah the the uh, azo orange and the Chinese orange t mixed together right here and they are uh, I didn't want it to be super bright so I put in a little bit of the uh I forget which one I have in that spot right there. Let me grab my swap sheet. Oh, Quinn Rust to kind of tone it down a little bit and make it look more like a nighttime orange color than a bright daytime kind of orange color. And I just keep going over the pumpkins. I put in a little bit of um, the indigo tint for shadowing uh, at the base of the pumpkins because they're in a pumpkin patch. I mean, they're not going to be super tidy and clean was my thought as I was painting, um, just got myself saying, um, if I've said that too many times already, I apologize. <laughs> Going in and just blocking in those oranges, uh, throwing in the shadow colors to push those, the pumpkin to the left and the pumpkin that's at the top behind the bird back and make that pumpkin that he's on, the stem he's resting on, uh, feel more in the forefront of the, of the painting. I gotta say, honestly, I was not thrilled when I got done with this painting. I, I really am still on the fence about it. You guys can let me know in the comments what you think, things that you would have changed, or ideas or thought patterns uh, about what I could have done a little differently. Um, right here, I'm, I'm darkening that, the pumpkins again. I, I blotted too much. Kind of wanted the top to be more bright more vibrant orange than the, than the bottom look more muddy and and dark and shadowy when I left that back one just more of a shadowy colored orange mixed in that uh, mixture of dioxazine uh, neutral tint and indigo for my shadow in with the orange mixture that I have I keep going back and forth and using all of those colors together uh, to a it lends a cohesiveness to your piece and then uh, I'm blocking in some some of the stem color right here and I need that to dry as well so that I can go in over the top of it again <coughs> sorry my mouth is dry I haven't talked all day literally I haven't I haven't talked to anybody all day today <laughs> It is 9.30 at night and I'm just sitting down to do this voiceover for the, this video that I wanted to have up to the, earlier today. Um, picked a firmer paintbrush. It is my Royal Alignical um, round number... What are you? You're number four, right? Yeah, round number four. It's a Moderna. Um, it's got a lot of good snap, so it lends a little bit of control. For getting in around that eye and the little hairs on the beak and the little teensy detail hairs um, around his head area mm. and then yeah getting in that bolder darker color I'm using a more inky consistency of paint here if you look on my palette that it's not moving at all it's not swooshing down it's pretty thick uh, consistency of paint because I really want the bird to pop off the page well, I'm, he's my focal point, um, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to make any decisions about it while I'm, while I'm doing the voiceover. I'm still on the fence about the painting in a general sense. I do like that I made him look floofy, though. He looks all poofed up and, and just a little miffed. You know how birds, well, birds do it when they get happy, too. They, they fluff up their feathers and they get all poofy. I was looking for him to be a little more raggedy than some of the more sleek, um, pristine looking uh, raven pictures that I looked at. And I looked at a good deal of raven reference photos before I got this down to about where I wanted it to be. Um, <clears throat> when I first did the sketch, I really didn't like it. I was not happy with the position of the bird. The composition isn't what I would like it to be. 
Um, but I went ahead and I, d I decided to go ahead and paint it anyways. It's a good practice piece. Um, and maybe in the next couple of days I can get in the, the raven piece that's in my head on paper. <laughs> Uh, just doing the some detailing on the feathers, dropping in some more of that dark inky consistency and getting in some of those flicks, just flicking the, the paintbrush to get those short feathery um, textures. Uh, oh, I wanted to go over and make them look more purple. So I grabbed a little dioxazine and thinned it out a little bit and I'm kind of just brushing over where the where there's still a little bit of light color <coughs> to make him look a little more purple but not look completely like filled in I didn't want to get rid of all of the textures of his feathers although looking back maybe that would have been a better piece it would be better if the textures of the feathers weren't so detailed I don't know I'm still on the fence <laughs> uh, I almost forgot to paint his feet so there we are painting his little claws and zooming out a bit, getting close to the end of this painting, I am back and forth with the shadowing. I really, really wasn't satisfied with how the uh, the pumpkins were kind of melding together and not looking individual. Decided to darken up those shadows a bit. Um, and... <coughs> deepen the colors on the pumpkins a little bit more m make them more of a n once again nighttime evening tone of pumpkin color I think that reads uh, I don't I think it reads as a more of a nighttime scene with the the dark colors on the pumpkins and then trying to get the shape and more texture on them because some pumpkins are really bumpy and textured um, I'm using the granulating black right here. I'm deciding that I really think the background is super light. And I regret this choice now. I decided to use the, the granulating black and just do a thin, thin wash to kind of uh, darken that background a bit and make it not quite so light, so bright. And looking back, I think possibly that might have been a wrong choice. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments below if, if you like it better with the lighter background or the darker background. And there were a bunch of brush marks and I wasn't digging that, so I did a little funky marks with the, the two inch uh, wash. And then going back in and picking at the bird a little bit. And yeah, that's about it for the voiceover section of this video. I hope you guys liked it. And uh, back to real time Stacy. I should stop fussing, huh? All right, I'm, all right, I'm gonna stop. This is probably way too long a video. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is the finished piece. And here we are. Oops. Go ahead and yeah, this paper really doesn't like tape either. I'm going to warm up the tape. A little trick you can do is warm up your tape and it will peel off the not so agreeable paper just a little bit better. Okay guys, cheap to get your paper to when you're drying it with a heat tool and it's curling and buckling and getting crazy is to dry the back. When you dry the back as well, it will kind of flatten back out a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and crop this piece right now. This is what I would do normally off camera, but um, I want to show you guys what it looks like. All done. Let's get that out of the way. There we go. Let's trim that edge off. Throw that away. And instead of removing the tape, I'm just going to cut it off. Why? Cause can. Cause I can. Just put that there. This here. Make sure it's lined up the way I want it. And cut that right off. There we go. There's our finished piece. 
Yay! I actually really like this. It turned out so much better than I thought it was going to. <coughs> I was not thinking it was going to turn out this cool. I'll zoom out a little bit more. Um, here's our, our swatches that we used. Um, he's a little more dark, but that's totally cool. I don't mind that. I would like around this eye right here to be a little more purpley though. A little less a little less the same color as the paper but not filled in all the way. There we go. That's less stark. There we go. Because realistically you would not see his eye kind of at all. Um, <clears throat> a little close up. I kind of like the textured background a little bit. I would now honestly I would probably go in with pastels and do a splotchy kind of bokeh-y smoother background in the but I'm not going to do that with this piece, but <clears throat> because it's so textured and the pumpkins are so textured, like the whole piece is very textured and I like a calm place for my eye to go. Not that I don't feel like the background isn't, but up close, you can see it is very busy textured, but I don't think it pulls your attention away from the foreground too much. Just personal preference. I really like how the pumpkins turned out in comparison to him. I like all the darks and the splotchy colors and yeah, I'm really digging this. Really digging it, you guys. I hope you liked it too. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Write them down. Drop them in the box below. I love to read them. I respond to all of them. As long as I can, I will respond to all comments um, in some fashion or another. And uh, yeah. Thanks for being here. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.